Isaac Robinson Smith. Welcome to Friends for Hello. Work. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. This is great. What yes. a treat. Bishop, for those yes. who don't know. Yes. The voice of Bishop. Can you give us our best Bishop voice right now? Like, let me hear a Bishop voice. Give it to me. It's really great to be here. <laughs> oh, my fun. God. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was way that, better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that's shockingly just, it, it's to see it happen. I, I love yeah. that. Yeah, I, I told uh, a couple of people the, the direction I got when I originally got the role when I was first doing it was a black Clint Eastwood. And so I just kind of ran with that kind oh, of mentality and that excellent. kind of voice placement. I was like, okay, I feel like I know where this guy's going to sit. So, <laughs> yeah, this is where I live. Well, Oh that's, my gosh, that's, that's actually, incredible, actually. Yeah. One of my, I mean, that leads into kind of my, my first question here. Yeah. Uh, did you watch, just as a fan growing up, the original X-Men 97 series? I or did. sorry, the original X-Men animated series. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I did. It, it was in pieces, though, just because uh, I was watching a lot of other things at the same time. So I know that I watched full episodes and I know that I really enjoyed it but like i was also watching batman the animated series and spider-man oh, yeah. the animated right. series and all that other stuff like just the the peak of animation for kids i feel oh my man was at that mm -hmm. po that point in history so yeah you watch a lot of other choir. stuff yeah but i mean it was such a great experience to see it and to then go from that to this like i mean i know that it must have been really important to me at some point when i was a kid because when i saw the audition come through and I knew they were bringing it back. When I figured that out, like everything was, mm -hmm. I got excited in a way I haven't felt in years. And so I was like, this is going to be pretty amazing. Like I was really excited to be a part of it. Um, once I got what the news man. did you get first, by the way? Did you get news that you were going to be in it? Or did you hear just on Twitter that it was coming back? So interestingly, um, and they will do this sometimes for auditions for various shows. They sent out the auditions in kind of um, a couple of waves. And so like for like for big video games, for example, sometimes they'll send out like the main characters and then they'll kind of go down down the list of the characters they need. So they'll we'll, we'll see the same project come out a few times, but different pieces of mm -hmm. it. And so I had initially seen the audition for um kind of the first wave of the characters kind of the ones we all remember kind of the main the other ones there the main ones there um mm -hmm. i don't i don't know if i went out for any of those originally maybe a couple but then i got the audition for this about maybe a uh, two or three four weeks later or so mm. um and i just like any other audition i recorded it this is my studio i recorded it here and i sent it out and i mm. like a month went by and then I was in a session for a game called Starfield that I did voice work okay. in for Bethesda. Mm -hmm. And I got an email on my phone and I couldn't do anything because I was in the session. So I was working and I couldn't tell anybody because it was a huge secret. So just like I had to contain <laughs> oh, this right. massive excitement that I was just, I'm part of it. I don't know what this uh, means yet, uh, but I'll <laughs> get back to it later. <laughs> but, you know, it was so it was really great. Um, and then I started Man. recording it uh, a little over two years ago. So it's been oh, gosh. a gosh. Yeah. So the patience for this stuff is wild because you don't, the first time I saw it all together was honestly the premiere when we had it on that, that Wednesday afternoon, wow. or Wednesday evening mm -hmm. at the El Capitan. Um, that's the first time I'd seen the theme song fully fleshed out the, the music, the sound Man. effect, all that stuff. I was meeting cast members for the first time because we all work individually. So yeah. like uh -huh. that was a wild experience, but anyway. I think sometimes we forget how long ago that was. Like when we were full disclosure off air, when we were talking, yeah. we were saying, I haven't seen today's episode yet. I've heard it's really good. Yeah. And we're like, well, right. you actually narrate the previously on, yeah. but then you're like, well, <laughs> uh -huh. It's been two years. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And, and that's, that, yes. I just remember when we were first talking with some folks that were involved with What If, it was the same thing. It was like, yeah. man, animation just takes so long. Yeah. That, that process, the turnaround time is really unique. It's amazing. And uh, I was ex I was one of the first people to be involved with What If on an early, early stage. I was just doing some scratch voiceover, like way before it was even oh, I mean, wow. it was becoming a show. But that was my first like connection with Marvel animation in general. I was working mm -hmm. on doing early voice scratch voiceover is what it's called. When you do the initial voiceover to do, to go along with the storyboards so they can get the mm -hmm. story approved. And then, but then they brought me on to do some voices for the show, which was cool, but it was amazing to watch that process because like I would get a script and I would do it. And if there was an alteration, they would destroy that entire script and then bring a whole new one to me. Like they're, they lock the stories huh. down like super it's, it's amazing. Wow. They're really, really amazing Man. with their story and how they protect it. 
you brought up Starfield. I noticed on your page that uh, you've done a ton of video game work, including yes. a little a little part in Spider Man Two, which you're talking yes. to the right people here. Yes. Oh man, yep. that was that was fun. Yeah, I I'm just a bunch of pedestrians throughout New York. I found myself as a crazy person <laughs> proclaiming incredible. the world was going to end in Central Park, and I did. I was part of the Oscorp security when you know you're first playing as Venom, and you know uh-huh. that whole that's, deal. Oh, that's oh fun. yes. Yeah. So that was really fun. I love that team. John Pazino, who does the music, is a good friend of the show. So oh, that's great. Oh, them we'll them. tell him. I, I sometimes just swing around to listen to the score, honestly, because oh, it's so annoying. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> how is video game, if at all, different than voice work for a show like this, an animated show? Is it different or are you kind of doing the same thing? It's very different just because, I mean, the, the base of all of it is acting. So that, that part of it stays true, but the difference in how it gets done is very different just because in an animation project, the script is written out and you're going through a narrative that is being viewed by the audience. But in the video game world, because the player is the director, there's a billion different ways that the player could go. So you have to record every single line of every option of what the <clears throat> person could do, um, how they could be interacting mm. with other characters. Mm. So like I just did a, um, a game a couple of days ago um, where I was playing somebody against the main character. And so I had to do, you know, all the variations of kind of all the variations of we found you or we got you or I see you like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember actually talking to the Starfield uh, writer. She was on the call for one of these sessions And it's an open world Bethesda game, so it's already big. But like I I asked her and I said, how much are you doing? And she said something like she'd written over 200,000 lines for this game. Um, And that's broken up over years and and characters like I did two pretty solid four hour sessions for my character to get through every single. It says this, which means this, which means branches off to here. Um, then so you it's think just, about the other open world games where yeah. your reaction changes based on the decision. Like I, exactly. I, I think about that sometimes like one little side sequence needed a hundred lines of dialogue, yeah. depending on how you exactly you know, play the game. Or Crazy. like when I did work for the Marvel Avengers game, I did a whole conversation, yeah. like a whole three pages with somebody. You don't even, you wouldn't even hear it if you didn't stop. It's one of those conversations that's just happening as you're walking past, but they need it so mm. that the world feels built wow. up. Um, so it's the same kind of fun, you know, work with characters and all that, but it's just, it's a lot, it's more involved in that way just because they need to make sure that every possibility is taken care of. Whereas animation, you have, you know, the script that stuff's already there. Yeah. But you do get right. choices in how to play it because the animation generally comes after the voice performance. So the best way I heard it is you got to give the animator something to draw. So your performance has to make the whole el- thing rise and elevate to what it is. Forgive me if this is stupid. Are you watching anything when you're reading? No, or not, not Nothing. really. Um, for as, mm-hmm. you know, I'll use this as an example. Um, that's the reason that I, you know, kind of have forgotten is because when we come in for these sessions, sometimes there will be ADR that we're doing, which means the picture has been locked and the animation is done, and we're just watching, mm-hmm. and then we're adding our voice to whatever they've decided. We need an extra moment here, an extra line here, or change the emphasis here. Um, but generally for this, you know, you come in and it's the script, it's you and the script and the director and the engineer. And maybe a couple mm. people on the team on Zoom on the other side, but there's nothing else. There's no music. There's nothing to watch. It's um, theater of the mind is the way I've heard it before because it's all all of it is up here to mm. really create. And you're reading the description and you're kind of filling out the world. Um, and that's the fun mm. and the challenge of voiceover is because it's so expansive, you can go so many places, but there really isn't anything other than your own mind to create the moments. And we're not working with the other actors sometimes. So like I have right. scenes with people that you know I didn't actually work with in tandem with their yeah, scenes. Right. So challenging. Yeah. yeah. Do do you find yourself kind of taking on a, a physicality when you're recording this stuff? Like, it, you know, you're you're whether you're by yourself or you're on camera, are you I, I was listening to an interview with Christopher Daniel Barnes talking yeah. about uh, voicing Spider-Man in that 90s series. And yeah, he talked yeah. about how he would kind of he would stand up taller when he was voicing Spider-Man <laughs> and then shrink yeah. down some to to voice Peter Parker. And I thought that, that, that was an interesting. Yeah, and that's 100% true. The physicality is everything when it comes to voicing mm. some of these things. Um, one of my favorite voice actors and uh, someone I know is uh, Bob Bergen, you know, the voice of Porky Pig for 30 plus years. Yeah, and wow. Like uh, all these amazing characters. One of his classes that he teaches, one of the things he uh, leads with and something he learned from a class he took is if you physically play the character, the voice will follow. And that's very true. Um, mm. I... Uh, 
have definitely, you know, I, if I'm not sweating by the end of a session that includes a lot of action or includes a lot of things going on, then I know that I need to do more just because I am very physical because it really does subconsciously give something extra to the voice. So I am doing a lot, hmm. um, when it comes to these different characters. So Bishop, I love that. we yes. <laughs> talked about a specific line you had in episode three. Yeah. And we were, uh, there's this, there's this line where you say time for an exorcism. punks." <laughs> yes. And <laughs> yes. I would, I brought it up before we knew we were going to get a chance to talk to you in yeah, that. Very I, I, I kind of love, it. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It, it is. really, right. <laughs> I love the campiness of it, the nostalgia yeah. of it. Like normally Robbie knows that's something that turns me off, but for whatever reason, I brought it up to say, it just feels like it fits so perfectly with what I'm seeing. Yeah. And the show in general does a ton of that. So in general, right. talk to me what it's like to play a character like Bishop, have lines like that and deliver them in a way that is campy and fun and not yeah. campy and dumb. Well, I'll tell you, I think one of the things that makes this show work is because they're leaning into that tone, which was what the original was. And I think there's a beat. I think there's an area of nostalgia that uh, we in this age group, you know, really respond to because that's mm -hmm. what we saw in the original show. So they're trying to carry that over and then elevating the themes and the animation at the same time. So while it is uh, so while it does have that fun in that camp, um, I love being able to say something like that because like something that's like that kind of catchphrase in animation is is not too common for stuff that I that I've done a long time so getting a, I like was able to bring everything to that which I thought was great um mm -hmm. and then following that with like the laser blast uh yeah. the, the blast of energy that's yes. the longest I've ever screamed in my entire life like I held that entire <laughs> thing in that that session it was really really fun um so getting to play that character in that way is really great for me to have all these great moments I made this connection recently with Bishop, the character for his own sake, um, because I am, I'm a biracial actor. I'm half black, half white. And so mm -hmm. by default, I don't fit in any category. I'm not in any, I'm not home anywhere. Really. I, I don't really know mm -hmm. community. Oh, I don't feel like I see any, where you're going. Yeah. And so you see where I'm, I'm saying Bishop is a man out of time. And so he's constantly trying to find where he fits and how he sets into the group and where he's going to go and how he's going to fix things and how to warn people about what's going to happen later by coming back, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's all over the place and trying to find his own path and his own way with his own definition of who he is. And so that really resonated with me once I figured that out, you know, over two years later after doing it, I was like, oh, I, <laughs> I didn't even realize this was going on. But I love huh. that part about him. Um, I love that. And I love how he is handling his role in the group so far. Um, it's been fun to take on somebody like that and to be someone that is um, has that kind of importance and has that kind of resonance with people that know who he is. Because it's it kind of interesting because he is a lot more involved than he was, you know, in the original version. Um, so yeah. it's been fun to, uh, yeah. Well, and it's, it, it's interesting because Kyle, uh, is not someone that grew up watching that series. So yeah. it's yeah. been fun talking about X-Men 97 because I've seen the whole thing and then rewatched it recently ahead of the, yeah. the 97 premiere and Kyle has right. not, but Bishop was not a, not necessarily a character that you would consider a, a core cast member, but right. I do feel like his appearances, were pretty memorable and there was yeah. a very specific take that I think was Philip Aiken was, it was, yes, was, he was the original. Yeah. Is that something that you, you know, obviously you have a lot of the original cast members coming back for right. this, that there's some continuity there, but you're also your own person and your own actor. And so you don't yeah. want to just be a slave to that continuity. So like, what was your approach in like taking direction from folks, but then also like, recognizing that you had this original to factor in. I think because of the fact that it was a continuation of the original, I sort of subconsciously already stocked in my head the tone and the feel of the character. That wasn't ever going to go away, like what he stood for, what he was doing and all of that. Um, but what was mm -hmm. nice is once I kind of came, because we, I sort of came in after the audition having an idea of what I wanted and then I was sort of guided in the way that they needed for the new show. Um, so... They didn't, I think what was great is the team was open to having the, the people that are, are new and they're coming and are bringing these characters back. They have, mm -hmm. you know, a sense of responsibility. Um, talk about with great power comes great responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. You know, well, here we go. Coming in and bringing the new generation forward, but also allowing our own personal um, uh, viewpoints and our personal touches to come through and not be, uh, not be 
pushed back on, you know, they, they let us yeah. come through with, with how we felt about it and how we wanted it to sound and how we wanted to act it. Um, and I, when I, the audition was pretty close to what you see in the show. So I just kind of took mm. what Philip Aiken had done and I researched, you know, the clips and looked at everything and then sort of looked at what the lines were and sort of took it into my own. And I was like, how can, what can I do and what can I bring to this? And so I just kind of mm -hmm. gave my take on it, which is all we can do as actors. It's like, here's my opinion. Um, and I'm going to put it in the room and if it, it gets taken great, if not fine, you know, I, I don't need, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not needed by me. So mm -hmm. I think Brian Cranston has this great, he has this great viewpoint on auditions where he said, your job is to go into the room, present a compelling, interesting character with the text and then walk away. And it, just in that hmm. motion alone, there is power in that. And so that's sort of what I did with this. Hmm. And by getting the job and coming in, I was able to say, I'm taking this on from Philip from before and keeping that sensibility about who Bishop is at his core, but also get, giving a new spin to it because there wasn't any sort of pushback on you need to stay within this frame. They're like, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to let you kind of move around a little bit. So that made me feel more at ease. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's no, sort of absolutely. Like. And yeah. I, I'm so glad to hear that that's the approach that the creators took because yeah. it, sometimes you can get a sense when something feels like Agreed. It, it's almost lifeless, you know, if you're yeah. just trying to replicate something. Yeah. Especially with a nostalgia prone project like this. Right. Well, I think that's why I think that's one of the reasons it works is because they've taken care of how the show's going to feel and how the characters the writing is phenomenal. The animation and the mm -hmm. art clearly is phenomenal. The team, the directing teams are all amazing. Um so they've done a lot of the heavy lifting for us of just making sure mm -hmm. the world is okay. Um I actually have yeah the first page of my script printed out and framed over my desk over here just to remember the moment of when it happened. And it has this whole description of like, here we go. And it's, it's the time of beepers and all this stuff. And we're going to go and back into uh -huh. this world and bring back this soap opera tone. And then in the middle of the page, it says, and with that said, previously on X-Men and then gives us the, the preamble before the first episode that came out. So that's oh, been on my wall for right a year. Now. And, yeah. <laughs> that's an amount been on my wall for a year and a half. And that has guided cool me through. I'd be like, okay, we're we're good. This is going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Man, they really have done a spectacular job. You said this at the very beginning of the uh, the interview here today. The taking the nostalgia and getting the tone right is one thing, but then to elevate it in so many ways, like everything is a little bit better than what I have seen. Of yes. the, like the music's yeah. a step up. Like yes. We, yeah. We, and we're going to talk to them actually here in a minute, but oh, that's great. amazing. <laughs> and then like the, like, like Robbie said, like blending the old voice actors, with the new, and like mm -hmm. if, if somebody has aged out of it, finding the right new voice and then the writing stepped up the themes, like the thematic elements that the show yeah. is talking about and dealing with a step up. Yes. But, yeah. But still has the soap opera camp. Yeah. I, I love it so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm not a writer. Cause I couldn't pull off what they're pulling off. Like it's just amazing what they've yeah. done. It's always fun to see something that's so good that you can't even articulate how how you would do that. Like sometimes yeah. you see something <laughs> right. and it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. there it is. But with yeah. this yeah. series, there are all these moments where I'm like, man, there is some crazy balancing act happening yes. that I cannot even begin to imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And then, you know, adding in adding in humor on top of all of that in the right way that makes us feel like, oh, that was really funny, but it's universal. And if you haven't seen the show, you get exactly what you know, exactly who this character is based off of what's going on. It's it's mm -hmm. all it's all great. So when will you get to see the rest with us? Weekly? Uh, yeah, yes, weekly. Yes, that's when I will get to see the rest. Yeah. The, the only like little preview I had was at the premiere. They premiered the first three episodes on the big screen for us. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. that's like the most I got to see before other people. But yeah, for me, my experience is, is weekly and then sort of ascertaining what's going on by hanging. I'm trying to hang out with the other cast, like individually, just to get to know them there more. And go. so like, there oh, was like a so hint. Fun. Yeah, there was like a hint to what's happening in this episode, like a few weeks ago. And I was like, no, 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 no don't tell me. Don't, I don't want to know. I, I want to <laughs> see it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's so good. fun. Thank you so much for your time. I'm I'm still thinking yes. about you doing the voice at the beginning of this episode. Like, God, <laughs> Rob, we need to get that work. Can, you need to do the Bishop voice of saying, you're listening to friends from work yeah. is what I need to hear. Okay, I'll do. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you're listening to friends from work. That's so good. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Thank wow. you so much for your time. We can't wait to see what's in store for Bishop and for the oh, entire yeah. show. So. Yeah, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be good. Yeah. Thank you. Man. Of course. Thank you, you're guys. You're the best.